the biggest challenge or one thing that we can work on for our session today? I guess since I haven't started pull calling yet, then I think the best thing to focus on would be like a strategy for that or even prepping for that. So sure. Marcus, of course, is like real big on their kind of approach and interest generators, et cetera. And sometimes I get a little bit, um, you know, too information overload. I think, you know, when you're kind of approaching these conversations, right, and there's a million ways yeah. that you can kind of like prep a call list as far as who target owners are. If you were to boil down kind of what what is like the simplest way that you would approach kind of getting started, you know, whether or not it's picking a single interest generator and going after X target owner group, um, what would that look like from your point of view? Sure, let's dive in. So <clears throat> I just want to also clarify, what software do you have with Marcus? Because I know they provide a lot. I just want to clarify. Yeah, um, so far I've been heavily using just CoStar and then um, uh, for contact vetting information, land vision. And then I think that's it right now for the most part. Got it. So CoStar and land vision for the most part. And then I have access to Zoom Info and then Instant Checkmate. So I've been kind of like, um, leveraging those um, two additional sites for information. I've got some yeah. other mapping program, but it's not been like that useful. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you here, uh, which is my script book. I mean, does that sound like a fair place to start with you, or do you think I should be asking some different questions? No, no, no. I like this. So, because I want I want you to get into a place where because I I, I uh, work with a lot of individuals in your shoes, which is like you're just getting started, right? Or specifically on the commercial real estate side, right? People are just getting started, whether it's just making some phone calls, trying to, you know, get their foot in the door. A lot of it is you just got to start making the calls, right? Like, cause it's like riding a bike. Like you and I could study about how to ride a bike all day long, but until we get on the bike and we actually scrape our knees a little bit and kind of get a feel for things, it's gonna be really hard to um, know what to be looking out for. You know, it's like, it's hard to get a feel without doing it. Right. Yeah. So what I did is I just gave you my script book. Okay. So in the script book, if you open that up. <clears throat> you said do a lot of cold calling on the men device side and it was the same way, you know, and I know same we kind of learn more about the business as you talk to people. But yeah, you know, it's the same, same exact game. There's a couple of things, which is first off, you have like your opening lines, which talks about, I have a client who's looking to buy a building similar to yours. I'm working with a client who's looking to buy another building in town. I'm working with a client going through a 1031 exchange. You know, my name is Holly with, with Marcus and Millichap. And I was calling you because, right? Like at the very beginning, it literally breaks that down for you. So it, it breaks that down for you to make sure that you like, you know, this is just, it's very, these are very simple opening lines. And then you can even talk about, hey, you know, shifting it when people say, you know, if you want to flip it into the the listing script where you can literally just go, would you be totally against having me market your property for sale? And it literally it says that on the next page. As you're going through these scripts here, uh, I mean, like this script will literally give you everything you possibly could ask for. Like if you scroll down to page, page six. Okay, cool. So this will literally give you every single question that you should ask while you're on the phone with them. Now you don't have to do them all in order. I don't think you need to like, while you're speaking to somebody new and if you and I casually are having a conversation, Holly, and you're the seller, and I would say, you know, the, the first question I would ask is probably not how many tenants are there currently in the building, but you'll get a feel when you're on the phone of what questions you can possibly ask. Be like, Holly, let, let me role play with you a little bit, right? If you're the seller. Like, hey, Holly, this is Henry with EXP Commercial. How are you doing today? Great, great, Henry. Nice to meet you, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah good, to meet, <laughs> good to meet you as well. So the reason for the phone call today is that I'm working with a client who's going through a 1031 exchange and I was just going to give you a call, Holly, to see if you'd be at all open to selling the property you have at 123 Main Street. Not at this time. Not at this time. Gotcha. I'm sure you get calls like this all the time, Holly. I am curious though, just to be super clear, is your building 100% occupied or is there any vacancy there. No, right now I've got it 100 occupied. Well, oh, that's great. That's great. Do you happen to have any other buildings that you uh, that uh, might have some vacancy? Because I have a client who's also looking for a possible lease. Um, no, this is the only property that I own in this okay, space. Nice. So. Nice. How long have you owned the building? It's been uh, seven years now. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I mean, uh, just curious because obviously you've owned it for quite some time. I mean, did you take advantage of the fantastic rates and refinance over the last few years, or did you still? Uh... Or you haven't refinanced yet? No, I've just been um, holding it steady. So I haven't done any restructuring and finance. Yeah, the only reason why I ask is because uh, right now, I'm sure... Um, Considering you bought it, it seems like at a fantastic price seven years ago, you might be able to pull out some equity, keep the cash flow going, and then buy another building. Is that something you've ever explored think, or ever thought about doing? No, not uh, recently, but I'd be open to talking about it for sure. Well, like I mentioned before, my name is Henry at the EXP Commercial. Uh, you know, I'm a part of a top producing sales team in the area. I'd love to maybe, why don't we have a time where, uh, you know, where maybe you're sitting in front of a computer or where we could do a Zoom or maybe I could stop by. I'm actually going to be in the area later this week if you're around. 
love to just chat with you for maybe five to 15 minutes. We can maybe come up with a game plan or I can at least show you what's possible. If it's something that you're interested in, we can have a further conversation. And if not, I'll, you know, you got a free coffee out of it. Would you be, would you be open to a coffee meeting maybe sometime later this week? Would Thursday or Friday be better for you? Sure. So it's like, and, and just know like the entire time when I'm doing this, by the way, it's very casual. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not pressuring you. There's like all I'm doing though is that if if you're still on the phone with me and you have not hung up, that means I'm going to ask the right. next question. You're inviting me to ask the next question because mm-hmm. it's like whoever's asking the question is in control. And if I'm asking you questions and then you just respond saying, no, I'm not interested and you're just sitting on the phone with me, you're asking me to ask you another question. That's right. Right? So it's like when I get hey, somebody who's saying... So it's like, just keep in mind that like you're going to... When cold calling, when prospecting in general to someone you've never spoken to... The odds of them saying that, yes, I am looking to sell right now for a fantastic price and I want you to be the listing agent is not what's going to occur. I know. Okay? What is to be prepared for, obviously you've been in med sales, you know, med, med device sales, right? Like you're opening up the opportunity, right? That's all we're doing. We're taking them from an absolute no, which is what everybody is until you call them, right? Every single person's an absolute no until you actually hear something from them. And maybe you call them up and they say, absolutely not, I have no interest in selling. Obviously you could probably, it sounds like you've gotten calls like this a lot, Holly. I am curious though, uh, do you happen to be in the, you know, in the market to if, uh, to possibly buy another amazing building if it was at the right price locally? And I, I would flip it into a buyer conversation, right? Like it's whatever need I can fill is my intention, which is why I kind of shifted into, is there a leasing opportunity? Is there a this opportunity? Is there a that opportunity, right? And I'm going to keep shifting until there's an opportunity for me. You said over the phone, and obviously we're just role playing and having some fun here. You at first said you're not interested in selling. Then you said that, uh, you know, you, you had a hundred percent occupancy and this was your only building, but it wasn't until I asked asked you a possible question about taking cash out of your building to possibly buy another one where you didn't have to even come out of pocket possibly, where then you're like, wait a second, I can do what? Now all of a sudden I open up an opportunity that wasn't there before. So it's like, it's, it's having that kind of just very flowy energy, which is I'm not fixated on anything that you say, right? Right. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Now, if you said Holly over the phone and we're just going to role play for a quick second, let's just say you say yes, because you're obviously not going to ask any of these questions you know, unless you say yes. So let's just say I go through the opening line and you say, yeah, I'm open to selling. Well, Holly, I am curious though. Did you happen to have some type of number in mind in which you'd possibly consider selling or, you know, you're just kind of, you know, maybe letting the, uh, the marketplace come to you? No, I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think it's worth? Well, that's a great question. Well, look, the way commercial real estate works is obviously, you know, as a landlord, you probably know this already, is that it's all based off of the income of the property and what's possible for the next in, you know, investor or buyer to make sense of the property with. That being said, would you be able to share some financials? Like how much money does your property generate currently? Like 250000 a year. 250 a year. Awesome. And is there any vacancy or is that at 100% occupancy? Um, that's at 100%. 100% great. So and you said it was 250 gross or was that triple net? Like are the leases gross, triple net leases or who's responsible for the expenses? Uh, it's, um, we'll go triple net. That's all triple net. So you walk away. Okay. So you net 250 grand a year. That's great. And then just curious if, and when you did sell the property, did you plan on doing a 1031 exchange or are you looking to retire? I haven't thought about it. I mean, I, you know, wasn't really thinking about selling, um, before you called me. So, well, look, uh, based on where, um, your income is at today. Obviously, I'd love to tour the property just to make sure that I can kind of get an idea for the condition. I'll actually be in the area later this week. And once I go through the property with you, we can afterwards, we can walk through some type of valuation to kind of give you an idea of where the valuation is today. Would a Thursday or Friday appointment be better for you? Let's go with uh, Thursday looks better than I said. Thursday, great. So you no, know, two or four be better for you. And then you just go right into the tie down. Again, really casual, really simple kind of conversation, which is going to lead you to the next steps. And again, not yeah. fixated on anything. I'm very just casually having a good conversation with you. I'm smiling the whole time, trying to have some fun. And I don't take anything you say too seriously. Where'd you get my number? Look, I got it from the online tax records. And then I just go into the next question. Or like nothing you say is going to make me feel some type of way. I just brush everything off and I move right into the next question. But that's like one of my... I guess, interest is to really make this fun, you know, the whole exercise of the whole process fun to start out with. So I've been trying to like keep that in the back of my mind, just like staying light, you know, like I told you, I think before, but I have like that engineering type mindset. So sometimes I take things like way too seriously. So I just, you know, like lighten the hell up and go with it. Right. So so think Um, about it like this, right? Can you, what's the name of one of your best friends? Amy. Imagine when you're speaking to a seller, you're speaking to Amy. There's a difference of being postured 
as an expert where you have to be quote being put on this pedestal. My name is so-and-so and I'm, you know, X, Y, Z top agent in whatever area. And I know I blah, 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 right. There's a difference of being that and being incredibly genuine and kind and having like a fun conversation and also just being incredibly confident in the way you speak. In every call, I am not even sharing whatsoever about my 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 production numbers, my team's this, my team's that, my expertise, how long I've been in the business. No one cares. I'm kind, I'm genuine, I know exactly what I'm talking about, and I sound incredibly confident when I say it. So it's like when I do that, no one's ever asking me the questions of like, well, what was your brokerage? You know, you know, like, did they do any business locally? Where you located? All this kind of stuff. Like, they don't care. Now, when you get to the appointment, they're gonna care, right? Like, as to why, like, maybe they should work with you versus somebody else, right? Like, and then you got to be prepared to answer some questions, right? But over the phone, you don't have to do all that, right? Because right. the intention of the phone call is to do what? I mean, to me, at least in my words, I would say I'm really kind of connecting with this owner, you know, and like. So it's, 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 it's three three things: connection, one hundred percent, gathering of information, two, mm -hmm. and number three, most importantly, because you don't want to ever forget this, is to set the appointment. The entire intention, of course, you want to connect and gather information, but if you get off the phone and you don't set an appointment, why did you call? Them, right. The purpose of us prospecting, right, is to set appointments. That's what we're doing. So yeah. it's like that's the mindset. That's the like that's the tunnel vision we have when we're prospecting for these people. So it's like when you're on the phone, the entire intention, like you you want to track on your, on, on a tracker, right? You get to literally do like, so here, right? I have my post-its. So I literally every day, obviously I write my goals. I was just writing them up, but I have, I have like my post-its here and I'm just taking, I'm taking a note of like how many times did I ask for an appointment today? Literally just track how many times a day you're saying, would an afternoon or evening appointment be better for you? Because if you ask that five, 10 times a day, how many appointments do you think you're going to set if you ask that 10 times a day? One maybe? At least. I thought it was once. Yeah. At least. Right. Like, you know, it would be hard to strike out 10 for, you know, uh, oh, for 10 above and beyond how many calls you made today, how many people said they'd be open to selling today. A big thing that I focus on with my teams and with my coaching students is you want to get the result piece of it tracked more than anything on the investment sales side. I do only investment sales and I'm also an investor myself. So one thing that we track across my teams is how many letters of intent did we write up today? Because that is a direct correlation to how many deals we're going to close. Yeah. On the on the um, more corporate-esque type of commercial real estate sales, which is what you're doing with Marcus and Millichap, where they want to push listings right very heavily, you're going to want to track how many times you're asking the question of would an afternoon or evening appointment be better for you? Because then you're going to be um, uh, setting more appointments to then get a hopefully to hopefully get the listing. Just start making some calls, right? Like, and just, I would just write down on your post-it or your pad of paper, or whatever, every objection that you get and then bring the, come to the group with your objections so that we can work on them. All right, sounds good. All right, if you need anything else, I'll only just reach out, okay? All right, thanks, we will do. Thanks, bye. Mm, bye.